don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's Halloween, it's the 31st of October and today I thought I would do a little bit of an experiment in one of my art journals with some crackle glaze. So let's turn over to my overhead camera and show you what I'm going to create or brew up, one of the two. So like I said, today's going to be a little bit of an experiment. Um, <clears throat> so as it's Halloween, I'm going to be working in my volume of the dolls journal, which I haven't done for a while. And of course, as it's Halloween, I'm going to have to use these two absolute beauties. Um, so I've already gone over the top of them with clear gesso just to get rid of that shine. It's not got rid of every single bit of shine, but it's got rid of most of it, enough for me to be able to work with it. And the other thing that I wanted to do today is I've dusted off, or I found as I was going through um, some stuff ready to pack up, um, this old Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp set. I believe it's called Life's Possibilities. Um, so I'm going to use this quote. I wasn't actually going to use a quote on the art journal page today, but I'm going to because I'm going to use that because I think it's quite nice to go with the um, the little witch image because it says to be all that is possible, we must attempt the impossible. To be all that we can be, we must dream of being more, which I think is kind of nice and fit in. Um, I may even use this clock stamp as well, which is, as you can see, extremely well loved. Started to go, um, but. That quote there, which I've already put onto a, uh, a block, um, just to make sure that it's not damaged or um, scratched, but it does stamp quite nicely. So yeah, I think we're going to use that. Now the experimental bit is with the crackle glaze. Uh, now I did a while ago um, a series of two or three videos where I experimented with crackle glaze on getting different thicknesses of crackle, different lightnesses and all that kind of stuff. But I only ever did it on a canvas. Um, I don't remember ever actually using the crackle glaze in an art journal page project. If I have, then I've obviously forgotten about it, pushed it to the back of my mind because it obviously didn't really work that very well, if I did. <laughs> but I can't remember for the life of me whether I did actually do this on an art journal page. So today I'm going to attempt it, see whether it works. So the paints that I'm going to use are obviously acrylic paints. So I'm going to be using Dina Wakeley's. So I've got Dina Wakeley Black. I've got Dina Wakeley Elephant. I've got Dina Wakeley Buff. And I've got Dina Wakeley White. So those are the four. Limited palette, as you can tell. Um, I've got a black and white witchy poo um, image. So I thought I would do a monotone, just shades of grey, only four, haha, <laughs> not 50, um, for this page. And if I do add any colour, then as it's Halloween today, 31st of October, the reason I'm using the witches, if I do use any colour, it'll only be very, very light touches of green. And that's it nothing else. Um, not even any orange, because orange has a tendency to go muddy. If I'm going to add it, if I want to add it, if I think I need to add it, I will add it, but just a touch of green. Okay, so to prepare the art journal page um, in my volume of the dolls journal, um, I'm going to, I've got these page protectors here. Now these are just the backs, it's like the wax backs of self-adhesive sheeting. Um, I've got quite a lot of it, so rather than throw it away, I've kept it for page protectors because pretty much nothing sticks to this. I would normally stick these together with a bit of tape, but nothing sticks to it. Um, so and sticking a clamp down on them doesn't really do much, um, but I will do, just for the sake of the fact that I've done it, um, just to kind of stop them from moving to it. See look they're just falling straight off. They're not really suitable but do you know what? I think it's gonna be one of them days today. But we'll persevere. We will persevere on. Okay, so first coat 
is going to go down. I'm not putting gesso down first because I want the acrylic paint to go on fairly thick. So black, here we go. And I'm going to do it mostly across this page and I'm going to fade away to the grey towards this side. So I want the darker black, I know, I know, on this side. And I'm going fairly kind of heavy and then I'm going to fade away just a little bit towards there but keep this kind of heavy. That's a lot of paint. That's a lot of paint. Okay, now while that's still wet, let's put my brush down somewhere where I'm not going to get my elbow in it. I'm going to bring in that elephant and I want to just. Don't tell me you've run out. No, I think the nozzle's clogged. Now, the last time I tried to do this, it shot off and I ended up getting paint everywhere. Yeah, it's just clogged a little bit. I am due for renewal on some of these paints. They are kind of running out. There we go. Um, but not until um, life picks up again. Okay, so let's just get some grey into that and then start working our way over here. See, it's gone really, really dark. And of course, it's very, very shiny, which basically means that you're not really going to be able to see it very well. Let's add some of that buff in. Here we go. You see? I'm definitely due a visit to Art from the Heart or somewhere like that. I'm just going to fade that out. There we go. The reason I've got plenty of that acrylic paint on the brush is because I want that acrylic crackle glaze to really kind of pick up and really work on the page. Um, let me just add some white into there. I might have to dip into my deco art to be honest. I don't think I've got that much of this left. Just a piece of scrap paper and I'll clear up a little bit of that paint off my brush. A bit lighter towards this side, and then it gets darker towards that side. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let me get it dried off, and then I'll join with you again once it's dry. This may take a while. Alrighty then. Now, believe it or not, those pages are dry. I've scratched it with my ring, but never mind. Um, as sometimes happens with some brands of acrylic paint, that when they dry, they dry with a gloss. This seems to happen with products from the Ranger stable. So Tim Holt, Dina Wakeley, Diane Reevely. Um, I've never tried any Wendy Vecchi paints. If she does do them, I don't know. Um, but, or Simon, is it Simon Hurley? Um, the new guy on the block. Um, I've never tried any paints from any of the others, Wendy or Simon, but Dina, Diane and Tim, yes. They always seem to leave some kind of gloss um, they're never quite as flat as you'd expect, but I have put quite a lot of paint on there. So I'm not pointing the finger of blame too heavily, if you know what I mean. Right, so the next step that I need to do is to put a layer of crackle glaze down on this. Now, I'm fairly kind of happy, the fact, for once, that it is 
kind of shiny, which means I've got a nice thick coating of this stuff, uh, of the paint on. So what I want to do now is I'm going to put a nice kind of thickish coat of the crackle glaze over the top. Now it is a glaze, so it will look shiny. That's the whole point. Um, and I can't remember, because I'm having one of those days today, whether I said or tried to explain what the aim of this page actually was with this crackle glaze. I was trying to get it so that I got more crackle at this side and less at this. Um, but I think at this stage of the game, I'm just going to be happy to get any crackle at all. Um, like I said, I've not done enough to my, well, to my recollection, or not that I recall, I haven't done an art journal page with the crackle glaze. I've done canvases, um, but I've never done an art journal page that I can remember. But I am getting on a bit, I am getting old, and fairly some memory to ruin in my family, so, right, I'm now going to leave that to dry au naturel. Now, you can um, help it along, it doesn't matter. Um, drying time 15 minutes to one hour depending on the temperature and humidity, it says, on the bottle. This is from a company called Polyvine. Um, it was sent to me by a lovely chap called Paul a while ago. He sent me a load of other products as well after he saw my last lot of experiments. Um, but the stuff that he sent me, it, it, it's like glitter stuff and not really the stuff that I would use. Um, but of course, crackle guys always useful. So I'm going to let that dry, like I said, unnatural, I'm going to shut up rambling and then I'll be back when that's dry and I've finished my coffee. We're back. So the glaze is now dry. It did pool a little bit down in the center of the page, but you know, not a huge problem. Uh, it has dried, but it is quite thick in there anyway. Um, it is a glaze, so it will be shiny, which is fine. Now, one of the things, you know, one of the things that you find when using this, when you read the instructions on the actual um, bottle, it says apply a base coat of emulsion latex and allow to dry, which is fine, which is your basic uh, acrylic paint anyway. Apply crackle glaze and allow to dry. That's all it says. Allow, you know, apply crackle glaze and allow to dry. What it should say is apply the crackle glaze in one direction only and allow to dry. And the reason I say that because the next line of the instructions is apply top coat at right angles to the glaze. So they're telling you in the instruction after that you should have actually put it on in one direction. So if you saw when I put the crackle glaze on I only went down from top to bottom, I didn't go across because I've used it before and I remembered that's what you need to do. Okay, so we're going to paint across the page. So if I turn the page around that way, I can paint down. So I've got my titanium white from um, Deco Art Americana, and I've also got some slate grey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some white with a little bit of the grey bit more like that, mix up the grey and then add a little bit so it's not exactly white but it's not exactly dark either and I've got a brush okay so this is going to be the fun bit trying to get it down so you need to try and get it in one kind of stroke without having to go back again and like I said, the idea is to try and get more crackles at one side than in the other. Now you can see already that it's starting to crackle here. So you can go back just a little bit, but not a lot.
So if I just go back a little bit there, a bit across there, just to where we didn't go before. There we go. And turn the page back around again to make sure I get it the right way up. I think it was that way. Our crackles are starting to appear quite nicely. Get rid of that because we don't want it. And I'll just dry that off while it's setting. That's pretty much going to dry almost instantaneous, but I'm going to help it along a little bit. Okay, so time to remove those page protectors. There we go. So that's still a bit warm. There is my crackle. So you can see the, the thicker the paint, the better the crackle. The, the thinner the paint, the smaller the crackles in it. So you can kind of control it um, to a certain degree. And that is just the kind of effect that I was looking for on that page. So we've got some real major crackling going on over here and then not so much over this side. It's heavier up the top, which is cool. Exactly what I wanted to do. But what I want to do now is I'm going to start adding some distressing. Yes, let's get the edges all nicely grunged up. So let me just see if I can find my... Um, Vintage photo, and also I want some black soot. I think. Right, let me go and sort out all my distressings, and then I'll be back because I've got no idea where I've put anything. Right, I've gone and dug out all of the distressings that I want. So we've got black soot. Vintage a photo, ground espresso for a little bit of darker brown. I've got some weathered wood just for a little bit of grey, and we've also got hickory smoke again for another kind of grey. So, what I'm going to do is I've got an old foam here anyway, so I'm going to go in first of all with some of that hickory smoke, and then I'm just going to start adding that around the edge of the page because I want it to be kind of, I want you to be able to see the crackle but I also don't want it to be too bright if you know what I mean. So we're going to dinge it up, grunge it. Like so. Well, I've already got muck on my fingers but never mind. I'm going in, but I'm not liking, it's too light still, so let's just go straight back with that black soot. That's more like it. Start fading that darkness in. And do the same at this side. So kind of creating a sort of vignette look. So you've got the darkness on the edge. A little bit of lightness in the middle. Okay, let's swap over now to vintage photo and then start adding in a little bit of warmth. There we go. Dark but still warm. So the original idea of the kind of monotone or monochromatic that gel pad gone out the window, but that's what happens. We change our minds, and it's okay to do that. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I'm liking the colour on that, but I think I might want to go a bit darker with the brown. So let's just add a little bit. There we go. Just around the edge. So we've got that vintage photo in the middle kind of bit. But let's just go a little bit darker. And because you've got um, a glaze on there, you can kind of get in there with your finger if you want to before it kind of dries in place. But don't forget it is kind of water reactive if you want it to go back in a bit later on. So I'm just pushing the ink with my finger and it's kind of going and seeping into those and um, the cracks and we're just getting a real nice kind of grungy sheen. Don't think we need that as it would. Don't think anyway. Let's just it might not work. That's just got a bit more greyer. Some of the areas that's going to be a bit too light. But I need to keep some space for the sentiment. Remember that? So that's going to go in there over the crackle. And then we're going to put our ladies in there. But I also want to add that clock. So I'm just going to stick that to the other side of the block. And then I'm going to use um, stays on. And I'm just going to roughly bang some of that on. And then let's just see what time that clock is. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that twelve is there at the top. So I'm going to put that just kind of off into the corner. A bit of a light stamp. Don't want to go too heavy with it. It's actually not put any on at all. Look. All right. Let's go back in. Actually, let's take that one off. I don't think I'm getting a proper proper kind of impression with it. Excuse the wobbly noises. 12. There we go. So we're just getting it a little bit. Let's do a little bit more down here. Perfect. And then just one, just slightly off there, just to kind of create that sort of visual triangle that we like to try and create. Visual triangle helps the eye around the page. And then in that set, there's also like a, um, a bird wire. A bird wire. A wire with birds sat on it. Bird wire. Yeah, I knew what I meant. Even if nobody else did. So that might be kind of fun, I think, just to kind of put in the background just where we're going to have our ladies. Now, bearing in mind this page isn't exactly um, flat, so and we're not going to get a perfect impression, but we kind of get some kind of grunginess in there. That'll do. I'm not trying to be too perfect today. The, the aim was to get that crackle in the page, and I've done that, so I'm fairly happy with the way that's worked. Um, now. What I want to try and do is try and get that quote, if I can find it again, stuck back onto there. So we can get it stuck down. Right, let's get it inked up. 
and I'm hoping, would you believe it, what you can hear rattling is actually a skull. <laughs> it's not secure properly. You don't believe me. Look, there you go. Arr! It is Halloween after all. Um, every time I shake the table, the, the jaw's rattling. <laughs> it's part of um, a little decoration that we're going to put in out later on for when the kids come round, if any come round, which I don't think they will do. Um, but, hey ho. Okay, so let's try. If I get, I get one shot at this and one shot only. So, because I can't put this in my stamp press. I don't think. I've never tried to put a full book in the stamp press. Do you think we ought to try it? Go on. Go on then. We did say we were going to experiment today and it is big enough to fit in. So let's have a go. Why not? In for a penny, in for a pound, eh? If you're going to commit, commit. I'll probably regret it. I know I will. Let's take those off because they're just going to get in the way, aren't they? Right. No, it's not going to work. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's swap that one over. No, it's not high. It's not as high. But if I put the book in there and we try it, look at me. I'm floundering. Floundering. I bet you're wondering why I've put that paper there, aren't you? Right, I've just knocked over all the paint. Um, I've put the paper there because I know I put ink onto the stamp without stamping it. So I know I've got... It's not going to do it. That isn't going to do it. I can tell. We can tell, we can tell, we can tell. Just ink it back up and give it one more go. And then we'll know not to put books in the stamp press ever again. Yeah, not going to get a decent impression. Okay. Back to the original plan. Put that one in the column headed failure. <laughs> okay, so I know I can hear you at home shouting at the screen saying, Put something underneath the front page. Yes, I can hear you. Quiet down, my ears are ringing. Right, so let's just try and get that a bit straight on the block. And then we'll see what we've got, what we can pad out from underneath. What have I got? I've got a little box here, too high. Pricking mat. I saw a pricking mat earlier. Will that do? I keep knocking the table. Ah, now. There you go, you see. That's just raised that up to the right height. not straight at all. I think this is turning into be one of those kind of stream of consciousness kind of pages where I'm just gabbling and not really saying anything coherent but hey ho. Right. I get a decent impression first time round, I'm going to be ecstatic. If I don't, yeah, let's just chalk it up to experience. Okay, shall we go? On three, on the count of three. One, two. Just give it a gentle push. Give it a chance to soak in, to sit. And then we'll see what we've got. I knew it would work. 
you've got no faith in me at all, have you? Okay, so let's pop our girls in. Look at that on that crackle. Ho 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 ho. Um, we may need to put a little bit of grounding in first. So let's get some black soot. Alright, so they're about there. Let's just give them a little bit of shadow to kind of stand on. And just darken that bit across there. The colour's kind of died down a bit, hasn't it? Now when it's dried, it's actually knocked back. So I might just have to go back around again. Where's that brown? See, if it's dying back and kind of diluting a little bit, then it's okay to come back in. Or it could be that I'm doing it while it's still dark, or still wet. Fingers for a reason. Ah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Glue. Glue me. All right. Glue me. It is rather gloomy, isn't it? Let's get some glue on the back of these ladies. So I'm just using PVA, just from this PVA. I've never noticed that before. Look at that there, it looks like a, a face, you know, one of those Halloween kind of faces you see in trees. Look at that, two eyes in a mouth. It's a Scooby-Doo mouth, if you know what I mean. This sounds rambling today, anyway. That should do. It might seem like a little bit of overkill, but what the heck. And then we'll stand them just about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on top just to hold them. Take that out. Put that on top. Right, give that a minute or two to dry and then I will be back. Right, so that of my ladies seem to be fairly dry and stuck down now. I keep reading this. Um, to be all that is possible, we must attempt the impossible. To be all that we can be, we must dream of being more. That first bit, to be all that is possible, we must attempt the impossible. I want to write the words defying gravity at the bottom. Don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> okay, I did say, if I was going to add any colour, I was going to have some green. So I'm just going to put a little bit on a cotton bud. And I am going to just very, very gently... Just turn our girls... So I don't know whether you've seen the stage show um, Wicked, which is the story of the Wicked Witch of the West from um, The Wizard of Oz. Uh, one of the songs that she sings is Defying Gravity. It's all about not um, allowing people to tell you what your limitations are. 
basically if you want to learn to fly learn to fly in her case quite literally so if somebody says you can't do something that's more of an impetus to go ahead and prove them wrong so let's just yeah I'm using this um, Q-tip cotton bud just to apply the distressing over the top because I've already gone in and put a coat of clear gesso over these just to try and get rid of that shine a little bit but if you haven't got the gesso you can still add colour over the top because it does work even if you have got the shiny one you just have to be a bit more patient <laughs> not quite so green on her I may have to come back and just give her a few more coats but I'm not going to add any more colour than that there you go I like it so like I said the aim for this page was to add that crackle in the background um, everything else the fact that we managed to get that first time and this I think works well well it does for me anyway and that's all that matters because it's my art journal page so there you go um, just need to sign and date it so I'm going to sign it over this side and it is 31st of the 10th 20 and I have resisted the temptation to put white splatters in the background some pages call for it some pages would work with it some pages I don't really want to spoil it if it goes wrong because I like it I like it a lot and I hope you did too so if you have please give this video a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video but also I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you videos like this would not be possible thank you that's all from me for now I'll see you all again very soon bye for now